Hey y'all, Mike back here with another Stock Strategy Explained, and today we're gonna to be talking about 5G, what it is, and how you can make money off of the upcoming 5G revolution. Make sure you leave a like on this video because if you leave a like, then you might just get some 5G coming right to you. And make sure you subscribe down below for more stock analysis, more IPO analysis, more product strategy analysis, and ultimately understanding which stocks that you should take a look at. And just a quick disclaimer again, this is not legal, tax, financial, or investment advice. I am not a financial advisor. Make sure you do your own research and your own homework before you do any sort of investing. And with that, let's get right into 5G. So first up, what the heck is even 5G? 5G is just the next generation of wireless connectivity and wireless internet. You can really think of it as faster internet speeds, better coverage and better connectivity, and lower latency. And that last word, latency, you might be wondering what the heck does that mean? That just means that you'll be able to talk quicker and see less delay and see less what I like to call lag. So you might notice in some of your Zoom calls or in some of your online games that there's a little bit of a delay of when you take an action and when it actually shows up on the screen. And lower latency helps reduce that by a lot. So the best way to think about 5G and its impact is looking at dial-up to DSL. So if you remember dial-up back in the day, it was super slow. You could barely load a web page in under a minute. But then DSL came around, and not only could you load web pages really fast, you could also watch movies, and you can download movies really quickly. And you could also play online games, although it was a little bit slow. But if you remember games like RuneScape and Flash Games Online, they were actually playable with DSL. But not only that, people could talk online. People could listen to music. People could actually start to download movies in a reasonable time frame, and people started to use the internet a lot more. So the main impact that I draw going from dial-up to DSL is there was a lot more internet opportunities. There's a lot more usage of the internet because there was a lot more use cases that weren't just super slow. So this is where I really see the impact of 5G. I see it unlocking new and interesting business use cases, gaming use cases, and lifestyle use cases that previously weren't easy to do on the go. So for now, most people are expecting it to come first to South Korea, China, and the USA. So these are the countries with some of the most advanced internet infrastructure, and this is where I see 5G having the biggest impact. The one interesting thing to look at with 5G is, because it is faster and because it is lower latency, it actually has a much shorter range. And what that means is you have to be closer to a tower to have good cell service. And I think that will be very interesting as we look into some of these stock ideas later on. So now the next question is, how do we make money off of this? What are the stocks to invest in and what is the right strategy here? So I'll try to break this question down by sectors. So first up is the phone sector. Obviously with 5G, you have to buy a phone that's 5G capable. And you have some of the top phone manufacturers such as Apple, Samsung, Huawei, Xiaomi, and a few other Chinese companies. So obviously Apple just released their new iPhone with 5G and Samsung also released their new phones with 5G too. And I would really only invest in Apple and Samsung and phone companies if you believe that 5G will get people to upgrade earlier or pay more for a phone. So the normal upgrade cycle is two to three years for a phone. And if you believe that 5G is an important feature and customers will go out of their way to pay and upgrade to a 5G phone, then I think it's worth considering Apple or Samsung. Also, if you think that customers are willing to spend more for a 5G enabled phone, then Apple and Samsung and other phone manufacturers can actually upsell and charge more for 5G phones, meaning that they'll make more revenue. However, my overall hypothesis is these probably aren't worth a great buy specifically for 5G. They're great buys in general, but for a lot of other reasons related to them making good phones and them having a good business strategy. The second big category is obviously wireless carriers. These are the carriers that you pay a monthly fee to to access their 4G and 5G and LTE networks, such as T-Mobile, Sprint, AT&T, and Verizon. In South Korea, we have SK Telecom. In China, we have China Mobile. These companies make a lot of sense because obviously they are the ones who are selling 5G and access to 5G directly to the consumers. So my hypothesis here is that 5G won't really cause brand new signups because the market is already saturated. Most people are already on a Sprint or a T-Mobile or a Verizon or a China Mobile or an SK Telecom plan already. So another strategy or hypothesis to look into is if one of the carriers has better 5G technology, we could actually see a switch or a migration of customers from one carrier to another. 
Taking a look in the US, T-Mobile actually has one of the best 5G networks around because of their merger with Sprint. I won't get too much into the technical details, but they have a lot of low band, mid band, and high band support for a lot of devices, which gives them the most coverage and some of the fastest speeds and the most access to the most devices. Now, the one thing to note is 5G is still only in a handful of cities, so I don't think this will be a huge factor in the next one to two years. But long term, if we're talking about five years, if one of these companies do, does have better 5G technology, I could see customers migrating from Verizon and AT&T over to T-Mobile because it's faster and has better coverage. And the other thing to look at is business models for these wireless carriers. If they somehow charge more or charge a premium for 5G access compared to 4G access, we might actually see customers paying more for access to 5G. My hypothesis here is that it's probably not a strong bet. This is a pretty competitive market, and I think 5G is going to soon be a table stake that every carrier needs to have. And I think in the beginning, we could see them charging a bit more, but I think long-term five to 10 years, it's gonna be a very competitive market. So the next big category to look at is the radio chip and semiconductor businesses that actually design and manufacture and sell a lot of these 5G chips to consumer devices. So what this means is in your Apple, in your Samsung, in your tablets, there's actually a 5G chip manufactured by an outside company that sells to Apple and Samsung so that they can put these chips into their devices. The two big players here are Qualcomm and MediaTek, which is mainly based in China. So I think this one's a very interesting play, but for the most part, they're pretty priced in. The demand for devices and the manufacturing of devices is planned on a multi-year basis. And I think there's not too much fluctuation here. You can think of manufacturing as you have to plan, you know, two to three years in advance and get those orders in as quickly as possible. Because of that, I think it's pretty planned out. And I think the growth is already priced in. People can already understand and can estimate and predict what the growth rates are for these companies. So because it's already priced in, I think these are interesting companies to hold, but I wouldn't expect too much insane growth or unexpected growth from these companies. So the next category of companies is what I like to call infrastructure companies. These are the companies that provide the infrastructure and the tooling and the land necessary for Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T to provide a large amount of 5G coverage. The interesting thing here is, like I previously noted before, because 5G is very fast and it's very low latency, you, it actually has pretty bad coverage. And the interesting strategy to note here is to get the same amount of coverage as 4G or 3G or 2G, you actually need more 5G cell towers. Because again, the, each cell tower has a lot less and it has a lot smaller radius of coverage. And so the three companies to really note here is AMT, Nokia, and Ericsson. So AMT, I think, is a very interesting play. So this is American Media Tower. And what they do is they actually lease the land that's required for a lot of these cell towers to T-Mobile and Verizon and AT&T. So not only will AMT lease more land to 5G wireless carriers, which will give them a nice big upfront chunk of revenue. But remember, these are leases. So that means long term, these companies like T-Mobile and Verizon are continuously paying on a month to month basis AMT a leasing fee and a rental fee for the land that they put their towers on. And because 5G requires more towers, that means more land, which means more leases, which means more rent for AMT. So I think AMT is a very strong buy, especially because these American wireless carriers want to have very good coverage, which requires a lot more land and a lot more towers and equipment. And I think AMT is in the best possible position to capture a lot of this expansion and a lot of this growth of 5G towers. So next up, we have Ericsson and Nokia. So these companies actually sell the towers and the infrastructure and the equipment to actually provide the 5G networks and the 5G capabilities. So the towers that go on AMT's land are from Nokia and Ericsson. I, so I think these two stocks are actually worth a look. I think it's unclear how much of their revenue will come from 5G equipment, but I can see a nice little boost to them. The one thing I would say that I like AMT over Nokia and Ericsson is that because AMT has leases, they get continuous money month over month, whereas Ericsson and Nokia, they sell the equipment once, and that's basically all that they get in terms of revenue. 
So the last category that I want to take a look at is auxiliary companies that will naturally benefit from faster speeds and a better wireless network. So one category that naturally comes to mind is gaming. There's a certain type of game that exists on mobile today, and it's because it doesn't take too much bandwidth, doesn't take too much data, it doesn't require a fast internet connection. If you take a look at some of the games that are popular on Xbox or on the PC, you'll see a lot of first person shooter games, you'll see a lot of very network heavy games that require low latency and a lot of data. So there's a few companies in this gaming category that I really like, such as EA, Zynga and Activision. I think they're really poised to take advantage of the 5G revolution and create new immersive and different types of games that are lower latency and super high bandwidth that were only possible on 5G. The only problem is here, as you know with mobile gaming, they're very cyclical and they're very trends based and they come and they go. And I would say, although these companies are the best ones to take advantage of 5G and create new and triple A types of games, it's still unclear which ones will hit, which ones will have the best games, and what exactly a different type of business model that they'll create. So looking at Zynga, they created the freemium model, but it's unclear if the freemium model will be the model for the 5G revolution, or if we'll see a similar model to EA, who charges a set fee of 60 bucks per game. Because it's hard to tell who the winner is, I don't think it's wise to invest in any one of these, especially because the gaming industry is so cyclical. So the next auxiliary company that I think will really benefit is video streaming. So this is video streaming, live streaming, even chatting with friends over video. So we have a few such as Netflix. Netflix obviously makes a lot of sense and they stream a lot of content. Same with Disney. Uh, another one is Zoom or if you wanna take a look at Twitch, which is under Amazon. So the thing to note here is that they will directly benefit because more people will be watching higher quality videos and will be able to stream videos faster. So the problem here is I don't think 5G will cause more people to subscribe to these services. I think 5G should be seen as an added bonus where if you're already a subscriber of Netflix, then you can watch and you can stream your Netflix you know, TV shows anywhere you want, not just at home. So the last auxiliary set of businesses to take a look at are businesses that will naturally benefit from more wireless and a more connected world and a faster internet connection in wireless. So a few companies to take a look at here that you probably haven't even heard of are Akami, Cloudflare, and Fastly. And what they really do is they provide the content distribution network. So you can imagine as you're distributing content to people wirelessly, they're probably not gonna be very close to a central server from Netflix. And Akami really helps these companies distribute it more efficiently. Same with Cloudflare and Fastly, but they also do web pages and they do mobile apps and they do other types of content that's not just video. And I think as consumers start to stream more content, play more games and consume more online media, we'll see these content distribution networks start to really see an increase in usage, especially with wireless users. And I think as usage grows from wireless and 5G, content distribution networks will naturally make a lot of money. And so wrapping it all up, I think there's a lot of interesting plays in the 5G space, but the two that I really like are infrastructure companies. So the ones that are providing more infrastructure and land to lease all this 5G equipment on, and I like the infrastructure play for 5G because 5G will require a lot more land and a lot more equipment and a lot more towers just to provide the same level of coverage because it has such a small range. The other industry that I really like are auxiliary companies that will naturally make a lot of money from a faster wireless network. So these are video game companies, these are video streaming companies and companies that will naturally benefit from distributing content such as Akami, Cloudflare, and Fastly. So with that, we wrap up the 5G stock recommendation analysis. Make sure you comment down below, which one is the most interesting to you and which stock are you going to either buy or begin investigating some more. And make sure you like this video and make sure you subscribe down below for more future updates. And finally, remember, don't invest in any company unless you understand their product strategy. And most importantly, make sure you make money. Peace.